Okay, Julia, I think we can probably get started. Um, I'll work on waiting room if you want to get started with with our introductions. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I just want to welcome everybody. Thank you for hopping on today's webinar to learn more about high school women's wrestling in Nebraska. Uh, my name is Julia Salata, and I am the state sanctioning program manager for Wrestle Like a Girl, where I'm overseeing the state sanctioning task forces in a number of different states, including, of course, Nebraska. Uh, I also wrestle for the U.S. national team and serve as the assistant coach at King University here in Bristol, Tennessee. So I have my hands in a lot of pies in regards to women's wrestling, and I'm really proud to be a part of the sport in so many capacities. Um, I've been working with the sanctioned Nebraska task force for about three months now. Uh, and it's just a really awesome group of people who are really working hard to grow women's wrestling all across the state. Um, and I hope most of you see the value in women's wrestling after we're here tonight. If you're already a part of the sport, I hope you learn more. Um, just feel empowered to go and, and reach out to other athletes in your area. Um, maybe go find some girls in your, your hallway, in your classes, and, and can share this information with them and maybe try to get them involved with the sport as well. Um, so with that, I'll introduce really quickly everyone else that's going to be on the call with us today. Once you get slide up here. Cool. So like I said, I'm Julia Salata. I work for Wrestling a Girl, I coach King University, wrestle for Team USA. Uh, Joan Fulp and Andrea Yamamoto are also on the call. They work for USA Wrestling for Girls High School Development um, and have a really solid understanding of the national landscape in regards to high school women's wrestling and state sanctioning. Uh, Ray Maxwell is also on this call. He's a member of your Nebraska State Task Force and is a coach at West Point Beamer. Les Painter's on this call as well, and he serves as the NSWCA Girls Director, the Pierce Girls Wrestling Club, and is also a member of the Nebraska Task Force. Kim Harrell is on here. Um, she's a Fremont Assistant Wrestling Coach and another Nebraska Task Force member. And then Taylor O'Donnell Bacher. She didn't put it on here, but she's a 2004 Olympian, and she's also on the show Alaska, The Last Frontier, so she's pretty cool. Um, and she also works with me at Wrestle Like a Girl and has been very involved with athlete activation with the state of Nebraska and the task force. So a really solid group we have on here tonight. You'll be hearing from all of them. Um, and I think I actually skipped over Ron Higdon, who is – working for the NSAA and is also the NWCA rep for Nebraska and is helping lead the Nebraska task force. So really good group. Um, and with that, I'm actually going to go pass it over to Ron to talk about what exactly sanction Nebraska is um, in regards to state sanctioning in your state. I had to make sure I unmute myself this time. Uh, my name is Ron Higdon. I'm, uh, as she said, I'm the assistant director at the NSA. I'm the director in charge of wrestling and I've been a, uh, an advocate for girls wrestling over the last several years, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a vote when it comes to it, but that being said, we have a lot of people in the state that are doing a tremendous job, and I want to just take a minute to, to point out how significant the amount of work and how organized and uh, beneficial Julia and Taylor have been with Wrestle Like a Girl, along with Andrea Yomamoto and Joan Fulp with um, Wrestle, Wrestling USA or USA Wrestling. And they have been a tremendous resource for our task force. They helped develop the task force. They've helped us in Nebraska be way more organized than we ever were before. And really, they do a good job of keeping all us men in line. So they're, they're really good at that. Um, as far as what is Sanctioned Nebraska, um, it is a movement that we have been involved with over the last few years. We've actually um, been deemed and I say we, the girls wrestling has been deemed an emerging sport in, this, in, in Nebraska for the NSAA. In all actuality, we've been emerging for the last three or four years. And, we, and I believe Joan's going to go through some of the numbers that we've been um, seeing over the last few years, not only in Nebraska, but across the nation. So uh, Sanction Nebraska is a movement to try to um, you know, promote girls wrestling, get more girls involved in wrestling, and the ultimate goal for that is to have the NSAA member schools voted in and or our board of directors voted in as a sanctioned, fully sanctioned sport. Right now, because it's emerging sport, the girls are actually going to be a, a member of the boys team. It's just going to be wrestling. It's not boys or girls wrestling. It's just wrestling. And they can have the opportunity to wrestle against boys if they wish, or they can wrestle only girls if they wish. We have a select number of tournaments that have been given to us. Um, information wise, and I have that up on our website on the girls wrestling tab. 
And if you're interested in seeing that, you can reach that. Uh, if you go to the wrestling page and go to um, the girls wrestling tab, there's a link to the list of tournaments that gives the dates, the locations and a contact information for each one of those. Um, we are in a phase right now where uh, we have to recruit. Um, we meaning everybody that it wants to see girls re wrestling sanctioned in Nebraska, we have to recruit and get numbers because numbers are, is what's going to make the difference for our board of directors to determine whether it can be sanctioned in the next couple of years. Uh, we're in the emerging sports status for the next three years. And anytime during those three years, our board of directors can choose to sanction it and have a fully sanctioned girls championship. Although the NSA doesn't have a sanctioned championship, state championship for girls wrestling, uh, Les Painter, uh, along with the NWC, NSWCA, uh, like they did last year, is going to sponsor again this year a girls state championship, and that'll be the week before our dual meet championship. I, I believe it's in the last week of January, or first week in February. Uh, that'll be held in York. Uh, and so that was a tremendous turnout last year. We're, we're looking to build the numbers. And as everybody moves forward, um, I want to be a, a resource for information. Uh, and if you have any questions with regard to the NSA or rules and regulations or what we can do to help uh, build it, then I, I would like to be uh, an open door for you. So you can reach me in my office at my email or call the office and I'll, I'll chat with you on the phone. But I'm gonna pass it back over to Julia here and if you have any questions during the webinar, if you go to the chat feature and, and ask it, then I'll be able to answer it if it's in my wheelhouse. Cool, thank you, Ron. Um, and like Ron mentioned, if you guys have any questions at any point um, as these slides come up, we will have time for an overall Q&A at the end. But if you have questions on any of these topics that we go over, feel free to put in that chat box and we'll address it as we can. And with that, I'm actually gonna kick it back over to Joan Fulp to talk about the national overview with high school women's wrestling. Hi, Nebraska. So good to be here this evening with all the uh, parents and athletes. Uh, I've worked with Andrew Yamamoto for the past four, almost five years now, and we are supported by USA Wrestling and we create data slides, data information, as well as coaches education information. And we're going to start out with NFHS participation. And that is your national federation for high school sports. And they create the numbers of participants in every sport uh, for high schools across the nation. So when we look at that wrestling data, we try to use those participation numbers. And you'll see this is uh, seven years uh, through 219. And their 2020 data doesn't come out till sometime late in this month of August. But take a look at the numbers. From 2017, where we had just 14,500 girls wrestling approximately, to actually today, because we can use hydration numbers. When the girls go through, they're out the testing, we can use those hydration numbers. And we know this year, there are over 28,000 girls wrestling in high schools across the nation. So in the three year time period, we've almost doubled. Extremely exciting is the last two years. 2019 and again using the hydration numbers we know we're up close to 30 percent increase we've said it for many years but we know it we are the fastest growing sport for girls high school across the nation in the next slide we're going to take a look at the number of states that have have created a pathway or officially said yes at that voting uh, board membership at the scholastic level to say we're going to have a girls championship we had only six states and it took 20 years to get six states. They have the little black asterisk in them. Starting in 2018, we had states come on board and say, yes, we're gonna hold a girls state championship. Two states during that time, Colorado and Arizona, Arizona did emerging sports status, just like you're doing right now. We're so excited. We count Nebraska in because you created that voting procedure that everybody has said yes to this emerging sports status. And Colorado did what they called a two-year pilot program, where they went through two years of growth, making sure things were moving forward, and then they said yes to that state championship completely under the umbrella of their state interscholastic association. So we have gone from six states and in two years, 
22 more states have said yes to girls wrestling. So this is amazing. It's fantastic. The states that you see not colored in, there are a lot of those states, probably another, at least half of those states are creating some type of championship, either through the coaches and officials association or through their high school coaches, or also doing something at a statewide level, as well as competition for girls during the season. So they're all progressing forward. On the next slide, take a look at the numbers. Take a look at the growth. Starting at the top, Missouri, you know, a neighboring state for you guys, 169 girls had weight hydrated in that season. And then they said, yes, we're gonna hold a state championship. Look at the increase, 910. And then this past season, 1,400 plus girls wrestling, over 1,200 increase. I don't know if we'll ever see another state have those types of numbers, but take a look. Kansas took three years before they actually said yes to a girls championship. They went through proposal after proposal. They started with 215, 376, and then this last year, 972 girls. Again, another huge increase. Arizona, same thing. Look at the numbers from 286, and this past year, 891. New Jersey, really small. They were like, okay, can we make this happen? Can we push this forward? And that first year, they went up to 445, and then almost 700 girls wrestling this past season. Take a look at the below 100 participants. And if you go across, you see in that first year of championship, some of the states have that championship date in. Others, such as Iowa, their coaches and officials, that's the CNO coaches and officials, created that championship. Iowa had just 80 girls, 90 girls for maybe two or three years. Then they increased to 189. And then look at the numbers last year. And they're still in that process. It's kind of like you guys. They're still in the process of growing the sport. Oklahoma, 80s. They were in the 80s for about three or four years and less than 80s, seriously. And then this year, they actually did an exhibition before they went ahead and said, yes, we're going to vote it in officially uh, for the 2021 season. But look at the numbers and look at the increase in that state from 87 to 309, 225 uh, increase in the numbers. Look at your own numbers. Nebraska in the 217-18 uh, season, 85, increased to 112. Then this past year, 186. So you've had 100, over 100 girls showing interest and coaches also. You know, we know those coaches are making this happen because they're out there welcoming the girls in. I always say, if the welcome mat is fully uh, visible at that wrestling practice room, you're gonna have the girls walk in. And then the last two states, Arkansas, only 44 girls. So, so what we understand is every state has a different process. It's not all uniform across the United States. But they had 44 girls wrestling and they said, hey, we know we need to make that championship happen. And again, look at the increase. So we know Nebraska, you guys hopefully next year are going to see another maybe 100 plus girls coming on board. So that's really exciting for your state and for the opportunities for girls wrestling. On the last slide, the opportunities for college are growing every week. We generally have to ask the NWCA, what are the numbers this week? But we know there's at least 85 colleges now offering girls wrestling. Divisions one, two, and three all approved emerging sports status this past spring. And the NAIA had enough colleges now to hold their own uh, women's uh, national invitational wrestling chip, uh, championship last year. And then think about this. We all see it. The MMA and the martial arts key continue to expand their visibility. Girls are aware of judo jiu-jitsu, all these sports, which are combat sports, and we need this sport in high school. Girls need to have that opportunity. And personally, I have two daughters that have wrestled on the national team for 13 years between them. My oldest daughter competed all the way through, and then my youngest is still competing at that level. And, and they needed that area to compete. They needed that opportunity to compete in a combat sport. And it got started in their middle school and high school years. So they went on to college and we know the educational opportunities are huge. If you have a daughter or if you're an athlete yourself, maybe you've just started and you think, uh, college, I'll never make that. These 85 plus colleges need you. They're looking for these young ladies all across the US that have the desire and the interest to learn, increase their opportunities, as well as get that uh, education. So I'm gonna turn that back over to uh, Julia. Are you gonna jump back in there on that? 
All right, I had to unmute myself. Um, so I'm just going to quickly touch on collegiate opportunities and just kind of piggyback off what Joan was talking about. Uh, so in addition to my role with state sanctioning at Wrestle Like a Girl, I'm also heavily involved in the collegiate sphere. I am currently going into my fifth year as the assistant coach at King University, and I also serve as the executive director of the Women's Collegiate Wrestling Coalition, which is the stakeholder group who's been pushing specifically NCAA women's wrestling forward for the past year or so. Um, so again, I have my hands in a lot of pies in that regard um, with wrestling a girl, my coaching and all of that. Uh, right now, as Joan mentioned, there are innumerable opportunities for female wrestlers at the collegiate level. Recently, we had NCAA Division II and III approve emerging sports status back in January. And then just back at the end of June, NCAA also approved Division I emerging sports status, uh, which was kind of the last little hurdle we had to go uh, get over there. We're now moving towards championship status and are continuing to grow at an incredible clip. Uh, we're closing in on 90 total collegiate programs across NCAA, NAI, and JUCO as well. And we're now at the point where we both have a separate NCAA-only member school national championship and that NAIA national invitational that Joan mentioned. The NCAA member school tournament came to fruition just this past season in its inaugural year, and it is actually officially recognized by the NCAA as a precursor to the uh, eventual NCAA championship. And that'll happen once we hit 40 NCAA programs. Um, we actually are at 40 that we know of. Um, the 40th is not official yet, but it will be here in a couple of weeks. And at that point, we'll be eligible to start transitioning into becoming a full NCAA championship sport. Um, it won't happen immediately once we hit 40 programs. It, we have to wait a couple of years based on budgeting cycles and that kind of a thing. But um, that just has to go through a process. We'll be able to become a full NCAA championship sport. Uh, the insane program number growth that we're seeing also means that there are now more roster spots becoming available. With so many of these newer programs kind of desperate to grow their numbers and fill their roster spots, that also means that there are an unreal amount of scholarships currently available. And that doesn't just apply to like that very top tier of athletes in the sport. Um, it really is just any girl that wants to continue wrestling at the collegiate level and shows kind of an interest. Um, which is pretty awesome. Um, there are collegiate roster spots and scholarships available to pretty much any girl with a desire to continue wrestling um, in college. And those opportunities are increasing almost on a weekly basis as we hear about more programs being added. Um, in terms of opportunity, there are currently 24% of college wrestlers are first-generation college students, which is second only to football at 25%. So it, it, insignificant at that point with that 1%. And that percentage is also based on men's wrestling. And it's highly likely that the rate amongst collegiate women's wrestling is even higher when it comes to first generation college students. If I had to make a projection, I'd actually guess it's probably close to 30% um, just to my own experiences. Our sport is also incredibly diverse in terms of racial demographics. Uh, Ray is gonna talk a little bit later about actual racial breakdowns, but my team alone at King University had 26 athletes on our roster last year and 18 of them were non-white. So that's pretty significant as well. The collegiate culture as a whole in women's wrestling is very diverse, it's very inclusive, um, and it's just pretty awesome to be a part of that culture and, and that kind of landscape. Uh, I've been involved with collegiate women's wrestling for nearly a decade at this point, uh, both as an athlete and a coach, and now kind of somewhat of an administrator. My role as the executive director as the WCWC, um, and I can't really imagine working in any other kind of environment because I enjoy it so much. Um, women's collegiate wrestling is incredibly dynamic. And, and like I said before, the opportunities are being created daily and at a very quick rate. So any girl who chooses to wrestle in Nebraska moving forward or is already wrestling, wrestling should definitely be looking into continuing that post high school when making their educational decision. Um, whether they want to go the community college route, NAI, NCAA, there are now women's wrestling opportunities available anywhere um, and the opportunity for scholarships. So that's pretty incredible. Um, I'm gonna stop rambling now. I'm, I'm really passionate about college women's wrestling. So I'm actually gonna pass it over to Andrea Yamamoto now to talk about um, kind of some of the equipment and practice attire stuff that is more specific to women's wrestling. Yeah, so if, um, you know, for, for girls that are, are already wrestling, you know, some of this is, is going to sound really familiar, but if we, uh, if there's an audience that, that's watching this that is, uh, has never wrestled before, you know, what are the, what are the, some of, some of the things that I need to be thinking about when I show up for my first practice? So uh, I always put at the top of the list when we show up for wrestling, you got to remove your jewelry, earrings, um, ear piercings, necklaces, rings. Uh, this is a, a very close contact combat sport, and so um, we want to make sure that we're not injuring our practice partners or even injuring ourselves with our jewelry. Um, if you have long hair, I highly recommend 
you know, get your, get your gear on in your locker room and either get to the wrestling room and start doing your hair, braiding it, uh, um, having a, a good ponytail. Um, but, you know, long hair, you want to make sure that you have it back and secured during practice. Um, and, then, and then have uh, backup hair bands um, ready to go in practice because we've all been there where we're doing our hair and that hair band snaps. And, you know, it's, it's tough to wrestle with long hair in your face. Um, it, you can, but it's, you know, it just makes it um, a little distracting. Um, so having extra hair bands is always a great idea. Um, I know the team that I coach, we actually had a hair band jar and everyone could donate hair bands into that. And so, you know, if a girl needed a hair band, there, there was always a, a hair band available. Um, I know a lot of girls love to do their nails and that's great, but we got to keep them short for wrestling. So um, if you have acrylics or things like that, they're either going to have to be trimmed short or uh, maybe just decide for, you know, the three months of the wrestling season that you're not going to be doing acrylics and, and long nails during that time. Um, and then, you know, if, especially if you're a first time wrestler, get a set of knee pads. Um, we spend um, a lot of time um, working off of our knees or working skills off of our knees. And so having some knee pads to start is really beneficial and they don't have to be expensive. You can get the cheapest of the cheap knee pads. Uh, they don't have to be special. Uh, just um, particularly, particularly for beginners, being able to pr protect your knees in, the, in those first couple of months. Um, showering. So after every practice, okay, it's really ideal that you get in the shower right after practice. I know sometimes with schedules and things, you just got to get home, but it is really important that you take a really, really good cleansing shower. So you want to make sure you have, you know, soap and clean towels and um, those little scrubby brushes and things like that. If you have long hair, okay, it's really important that you lift up that hair and get all the skin right along um, your hairline. Uh, long hair, you know, sometimes we just kind of wash and go and we forget, you know, um, skin infections, you know, like those places that we don't get to. So just make sure um, that you're taking a really, really good shower. And clean towels, make sure you're not using the same towel over and over and over again after practice. Um, okay, periods, we can't get away from it, right? And in all sports, we have to deal with that and in wrestling too. So just make sure that you have everything that you need. Um, that again, in the medical kit in the, in the wrestling room or in a special box that you girls put together, you can make sure that you have backups for yourselves and others. Um, but um, you know, it's okay to just let your coach like you normally would if you need to use the restroom. So it's okay to use the restroom and just say, you know, I just need to go use the restroom. Your coach will understand um, and, and take care of, of yourself. And luchafit.com has a great piece on handling your period in, in practice and in competition. So we've got that on there. You should check that out. Um, okay, what to wear, okay? If I'm new to the sport of wrestling, you know, we typically don't like to wear a lot of loose clothing. Again, contact combat sport. We don't want to get fingers caught in t-shirts. So I recommend a sports bra and a t-shirt, um, shorts, tights are really popular right now and, and a lot of people are wearing in, uh, tights in wrestling, whether those are full length tights or whether those are, you know, just down to your knee. And, you know, a, a lot of kids like to just wear, you know, uh, sweat bottoms and that's fine. Um, if you're going to wear running shorts, um, you're probably going to want to have some sort of compression short underneath it. Remember, this is a high agility, almost 360 degree sport. We're upside down a lot of the times. Um, those shorter shorts just aren't always so great for practice. You're gonna need a pair of wrestling shoes. Again, if you're a beginner, you don't need to go out and spend $120 on a pair of wrestling shoes. Go ahead and just get an entry level pair of shoes or, or better yet, if you can borrow a pair to get started, that's another great way um, to get ready for your first practice. And then the next slide is for competition. <laughs> okay, so a lot of things are actually the same, right? You're gonna get a uniform from your school, um, but you know, the night before competition, you wanna make sure that you've got everything in your gear bag, right? You wanna have your uniform, you wanna double check everything, you wanna have, make sure um, that if you're wearing a singlet specifically, 
that um, your undergarments have to, per NFHS rules, have to completely cover your rear end, okay? So, you know, thongs, they, they can be seen under a singlet, okay? So the NFHS rule is you've got to wear underwear that completely, you know, covers your, your rear end. Um, sports bras, okay? You really need a good sports bra for competition. And I highly recommend, and we have it in the photo here, if you can get your hands on a, what's called a high neck or a high cut sports bra, um, that is really gonna help reduce your risk of exposure during your matches. Um, so, and that, that is also an NFHS rule that they're trying to help reduce the risk of exposure in girls in competition. Make sure you've got your headgear in your gear bag. Make sure that you have put it on and practice with it a couple times in practice so that the fit is right. There's nothing worse than, you know, messing with your headgear for 10 minutes during, you know, a match. So go ahead and try that headgear on in practice. A lot of kids like to wear their headgear in practice, but your first time wearing it doesn't want to be your first match. You want to try to have it in practice and make sure it's adjusted right. And if there are any issues, you can work that out, you know, in, um, in practice. You got to have your nails trimmed again. We don't want anyone to get, you know, cut by nails. Um, if you've been using your knee pads in practice, make sure they're washed and clean before uh, practice. If you wear braces, you have to wear a mouth guard or some sort of mouth protection. Um, again, sometimes, you know, gosh darn it, I'm gonna be on my period during that tournament. Make sure that you have everything that you need and have plenty of extras. It may not be you that needs the extra, it may be a teammate or it may even be, you know, another girl on another team that needs something. And so having extras is, um, is really important. Now, some coaches just put kids on the bus right after the tournament, they go home. Uh, others like, you know, to make sure that we're showering after competition, that's what I prefer. So make sure again, you have a clean set of clothes and a towel and, and soap and shampoo and everything that you need to take a quick shower after your event. And last but not least, don't forget your winning attitude. Competition is fun, believe in yourself, have fun with your teammates. Have a great time and, uh, and go for your goals. And uh, I'm Ray Maxwell. I'm the head coach at West Point Beamer for the girls. We started four years ago. Uh, we have been the largest team in the state of Nebraska for those four years. Uh, last year, we were fortunate enough to win the NSWCA state uh, tournament. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit about communicating with your coach. I think it's really important for uh, parents primarily. I guess we look at you right now. Um, talk to the coach and make sure that they really show that they care about your daughter. Um, it's important to be connected um, to those athletes and to know that uh, you're not going to be someone who is, is uh, looked down upon. They need to see that you are an athlete and that you need to be able to compete with everybody else and they are not going to cut you any deals. You're going to compete like the guys compete and um, you're going to have to raise a level if you haven't been to that level yet. Um, but uh, have pride in yourself and know that you belong there. Um, for you parents, I make sure those coaches answer your questions. Um, and there is no stupid question. Um, most of the time in coaches and parents meetings, if you have a question, ask it, because there are some parents sitting in the room that just don't have enough guts to really ask it or feel uncomfortable asking it, um, ask. Um, if you need to call the coach aside and talk to them, but uh, have a good communication set up with the coach, make sure that, that they uh, know where you're coming from and that they answer your questions, because uh, you need to be at, at peace with this whole process and to know that your daughter is gonna be put, placed in the hands in Nebraska right now, and probably a male coach's hands um, until we start getting some female coaches on board. Um, I'm fortunate enough to, to rob one from Les Painter, and uh, I will have a female coach on staff this year, so will Fremont. Um, also, uh, talk to your coach about what is allowed for communication, whether that be text or email, or, or maybe even um, their phone where you can call them and talk to them personally, call them, set them aside at a tournament, but um, talk to your coach about communication avenues, uh, whatever that may be. Um, just make sure that that avenue is always available. Um, you be able to communicate with your coach at any given moment you need. Um, you are the parents. They are 
taking care of one of the most precious commodities that you will ever have in your life. So um, make sure that they are on the same page with you. Uh, we go on the next slide. Um, for you girls, uh, talk to your coach and to the other wrestlers on the team. Um, you may be the first girl to come out for and might be the only one on the, on the squad and you're going to be wrestling with a bunch of guys. Um, know that Nebraska has the option for you to wrestle girls when you get to a tournament, but um, you may be the only girl on the team and stand your ground. Um, learn, uh, make sure that you are uh, very attentive, listen to it and, and really pay attention. Ask questions. There are no dumb questions. Uh, make sure you ask questions if you don't understand. Uh, invite your friends to join. There's nothing better than having two girls in the room. If, if you're the first one, invite a friend. Um, I've seen girls who have been invited as friends, and all of a sudden they blossom and find out this sport is fun, and then they start inviting friends. And so it will grow. So invite a friend to join. Um, teammates, you'll, you'll create a bond in this sport like no other. I'll guarantee it. Um, like I said before, show up ready to learn. Do not, um, whatever distractions you have during the day, um, set them aside. Focus on the time when you're in practice. When you go to tournaments, watch. Um, you, you can see and learn all avenues. So don't just uh, learn in practice, learn in tournaments as well too, because there are some fantastic athletes to watch in wrestling tournaments. So make sure you are, are uh, paying attention all the time and that you're going to be challenged. Don't ever become complacent that you've arrived uh, because you won't. Um, that, that becomes stagnant and you lose any effectiveness you have in this sport. Be yourself. Um, don't try to form yourself into somebody else that you are. Um, there's, there's nothing good about being artificial. Um, so be yourself. You do belong here. This sport um, our girls, our, our women in this nation have fought for most of the rights they've had. There was one time when our leaders in this nation didn't believe we women should have a voice in who ran this government. And that finally has changed. So uh, you belong here. This is your right. And uh, make sure you understand that and that you believe that. So connect with other girls from other teams. Like I said, this is a sport that forms bonds. Um, I've been out of school for a ton of years and I still have close friendships with people that I competed against way back in high school. Um, you will have bonds, uh, you'll go on trips, you'll form teams and we've had a Nebraska team, Les Painter and I have a coach, Don, and was, I've got invited to all the graduations this year. It's just a huge family. So make sure um, you take time to learn other girls' names um, put them on Snapchat or, or whatever way you want to communicate with them, but uh, form bonds. Um, and anything that adds girls, uh, make sure that you can add any type of girls. Make a, a, a group chat and start talking about them. Um, just anything you can to bring in other girls and be excited about it. That's how you're going to bring girls online. Um, we are lucky enough to have Taylor on board here, and she was a only girl on the team for a while, and she's going to give a few of uh, her examples that she had along that time. Hey, guys. Yes. Um, there's a little echoing happening. Okay, we're good. Um, thanks for having me on here. I really have enjoyed getting to know Nebraska. Um, but like many of you, so some of you are joining um, a girls team, and it will be a girls team. Um, with many other girls and 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 there you know that is one kind of culture that you get to be a part of some of you guys will be being the first girls to join your team and um that's how a lot of us has, have gotten started that's how andrea got started i think julia got started it's how many of you guys got started so i just wanted to echo um what what um ray has said and and you know my first time on the team um, up here in Alaska, uh, I said I wanted to join the team, and um, the coach was on board, principal was on board, but my school board said, no, you can't join the team. And so I had to do a little advocating for myself. 
And you might even run into that when it comes to um, coaches who are not comfortable with girls on the team. But you have the support of all of these people behind you um, here on the call. Um, and there's resources for you to reach out to and, and get that support you need to help advocate for yourself. Um, it's a really good skill to have as a human being. Um, you know, uh, I, I added this quote. It's from One Courageous Girl. In fact, um, the uh, slide beforehand, where we go. Um, there's some resources that, you, that are linked here. One Courageous Girl, um, that's by Joan and Andrea, and then starting a girls high school wrestling program. Those are both, av both available on USA Wrestling, but they're linked here and you guys will be able to have access to that. Um, they're really good resources that you can, you know, if you don't, if your coach is like, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to wrestle, how to coach girls. You're like, oh, no big deal. Here's, here's a guide, right? So the resource, the resources are out there and the support is out there. So um, when you're joining a team, there's a lot of um, that is majority boys. You might want to like just try to be like the boys. And if that's who you are, then do that. But like Ray said, you know, be yourself. Um, the one girl on the team does not always need to behave, communicate, or assimilate like a male to be valued in the wrestling program. Her female qualities, so your female qualities, are not weaknesses. They're what you draw on um, for strength every day to be the one girl on a boys team. So I think that that's a really important, important quote from um, One Courageous Girl because it means that, you know, you're going to join a team and there may not be a, lo a lot of other girls in your school joining, but, it, but being a female doesn't set you behind. It actually gives you tools that other boy wrestlers don't have. So, um, when you think of that, when you think, okay, I, I get to be um, a strong, capable wrestler because I'm a female, not despite being a female, it, it's a really um, important mind shift. Um, and then there's some other resources that are linked right here. Um, a guide for athletes and parents starting wrestling from Wrestle Like a Girl and um, Lucha Fit. We've already talked about um, that website. It's a really good um, uh, resource for uh, female wrestlers. And then um, a Girl Scout in California just started a new website called Girls Can Wrestle. And so you can check that out as well. There's resources out there. Um, don't give up. Just keep at it. Wrestling is intense. And um, if it's the sport that fits you, there's nothing that uh, can get in your way. I'm going to hand it back over to Ray. All right. Um that information that's on the screen right now, you can read that information that talks about the inclusivity of this, uh, this sport. Um, this sport is like no other. Uh, Nebraska has had a huge influx of uh, Hispanic population. West Point is, is not different from that. Uh, 10 years ago, we were pretty much an all Anglo school. And now we have almost half uh, of our school is uh, Hispanic in nature. Um, so, we found also that um, the Hispanic girls uh, don't really care a lot for basketball, and that seems to be the only other sport unless you're a large enough school in Nebraska. Um, so this gives them something to do. Something I want to mention also is when you invite your friends, maybe you're an athletic girl and you want to compete in them, um, those girls that are not maybe real mobile, uh, maybe larger than they want to be, Wrestling is a great sport to get your body in shape, maybe slender down a little bit um, to find out how, that you can do a work ethic and uh, continue on for the rest of your life. Um, it, it's, it's great because this is not just for the four years in high school, it's, it's for life and it will change your life. You will learn things in this sport that will change you forever. But it doesn't matter your body makeup. Um, I, I had a girl come out as a freshman that wrestled uh, a girl that was a uh, weightlifting champion and she went on to weightlift in college. She was just chiseled. And uh, my girl was not chiseled in any way, shape or form. And she defeated her. Um, so your, your body size, the way you're built is, is not, whether you're tiny, whether you're large, it doesn't matter. This sport has a spot for you. And uh, 
you can be part of the diversity that this sport offers. Um, there are a number of weight classes. We haven't really settled on, on those in Nebraska yet. There may be 10, there may be more, um, but there are a number of weight classes. If you want to wrestle against boys, we have 14 weight classes. So there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of different body sizes that uh, you can be a part of um, and fill in. And you don't have to lose weight. You can wrestle where you're at. Um, I guarantee practice alone, you will start to lose weight um, just because you're going to be very, very active and, and you're going to lose some weight and slender up and tone up. And, uh, and maybe that's what you want to do. Um, but whatever the case is, this sport includes everybody. Um, you don't have to be the girliest girl or the, or the guy that, or the lady that can just rumble with the guys. It doesn't matter. Um, you fit in and you belong here. So um, if you're considering it, uh, even if you don't, come and give it a try. Um, I have girls that come and give it a try. And go, wow, this is, this is really cool. And then they find out that they become part of a, a huge family that they just don't ever want to disappoint. And they have a lot of connections that last for life. Um, and you will cross uh, ethnic boundaries um, and, and find friends from all walks of life. And this sport offers that. So please consider wrestling. Um, if you have friends that are not on this video, um, talk to them. Ask them to come along. And, and start wrestling. We have to increase our numbers in this state to get it sanctioned. Um, I will turn it over, I guess, to Julia, if she has anything to add, and then she can continue on from there. Yeah. So, so why wrestling? Um, obviously, I'm completely biased, and in my completely biased and subjective opinion, wrestling is the greatest sport on earth. And there's a reason I've continued to pursue this sport as an athlete now into my late 20s uh, that I choose to coach at the collegiate level and have really just gotten involved as much as I have in helping with the growth of our sport at the grassroots level and on up all through the senior level. Uh, there are countless life skills that can be learned from this sport. And as our national team coach, Terry Steiner, always says, those skills that are learned through wrestling shouldn't just, they should be offered to the entire population, not just the boys. Um, you know, even the good old boys of wrestling love to preach about all of the life skills you can learn and all the attributes you acquire through the sport. Why are we trying to limit that, that those skills to just 50% of our population? Let's open it up to everyone and include the girls and, and let those girls learn those skills as well. Um, as a college coach now, I get to watch the development of young women over a four-year period, sometimes five, and the growth they have as a result of being a student athlete in the sport of wrestling is, is just incredible. Um, so obviously I'm a big fan of the sport, but once again, I'll stop rambling um, and pass it over to Taya and Kim to further break down the benefits of wrestling. Yeah. I'll go ahead and speak first if that's if you don't mind um i'm gonna speak i guess from a parent perspective and why um what i think that my daughter has gotten out of wrestling and why i see it's um it's such an amazing sport for females to get involved with um one thing that i've noticed when when my over the eight years that my daughter has wrestled is her confidence in herself and um, her sense of knowing what she's able to do and um just her growth in herself personally has come from wrestling. Um, if she wasn't a wrestler, I don't know that she would have had that ability to build the confidence that she has in herself. So I think that's one of the huge things that girls can take out of wrestling is the confidence that they can build, uh, especially when they're working in possibly a room full of boys, just to see those small little achievements each day just will definitely just build your confidence um, as a person and how you believe in yourself. Another thing as a parent that I think is great for wrestling is that you're learning self-defense. So when you go out in the public and, um, or go to college, wherever you may be, you have those skills backing you that you can use if you need to. Um, leadership opportunities are awesome in the sport of wrestling. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, just being a part of a team especially if you are the first female in the room, um, you have that ability to go out and help recruit, be a leader as one of the first. Um, so I think that uh, those are just a few things. A lot of the other stuff we've kind of already touched on a little bit, so I'm not gonna go over those too much more. Taylor, do you have anything else to add? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm actually super curious. So um, we're off screen share. Um, there's so many wrestlers on here um, and so many parents and coaches. I'd really like to just throw it out to you guys. What, like, what are things that you have gotten from wrestling? So just, we'll keep it quick, but just like uh, a word or a sentence, um, unmute and like step on the mat and say something. I want to hear it. We all want to hear it. I'm going to start calling on people. Hmm. People can get voluntold. Okay. It's Sophia, my favorite person to voluntold. What do you get from wrestling? Uh, I get to make more new friends and like meet other girls because I'm the only girl on my team. So I like meeting other girls on different teams and just like kind of making friends with them. Super. I love it. Cool. Okay. Sonia, I'm... I'm going to call you out. What did you get? What have you gotten from wrestling? Oh, we might not have her. Okay. Um, Keta or Kita? She says that she loves that wrestling teaches discipline. Totally. Anybody else? Um, who else? Uh, Kara McLean. What have you seen wrestling? do uh for me wrestling brought out my confidence to stand up for myself more often um i will tell you guys i all came from abusive relationships so it's been really great for me to build my confidence again and get back out in this world and start building and i'm very looking forward to supporting girls in wrestling and growing the sport so i'm can't wait to work with you guys Thanks, Kara. I think that we see that a lot where, you know, when you've been in a really difficult situation in the past, you get to re um, figure out what being physical means. And in wrestling, you start to own your power. So thanks for sharing that. Um, hmm, uh, let's see. Shannon, I don't know who you are, but I want to. What has wrestling done for you? I can't call on people with their cameras off i guess okay uh we're from afton stucy stucy yeah and afton what has wrestling done for you um it has taught me how to be confident and hard working and to push through when you feel like you can't you gotta keep going and be brave so i feel like it's taught me awesome thank you so much totally confidence um, Adriana, what, res what has wrestling done for you? Um, I just, I love how, like, when we're in the wrestling room, like, just practicing, giving our heart out, just knowing that other girls are going through it, too. It's not just you, like, not being alone in it. Mm hmm Yeah, awesome. Cool. Okay, thank you, guys. That's what I, I just wanted to hear. You guys know, um, best the the value why why we do wrestling um and uh, it's good to, <laughs> to remind your, each other when things are really tough right or when we can't even get on the mat for so long so i'm going to send it back over to um andrea and do you want to talk more about wrestling being for everybody yeah so um you know i i you know couldn't you know, say more than what Ray did about the inclusivity um, of wrestling. Um, wrestling, wrestling is as pure of a human sport as, as I think we can we can get. It truly is a sport for everybody. You know, we have weight classes, right? And so, if you're a a girl who's four eleven and ninety eight pounds, or you're a girl who's you know five nine and one hundred ninety pounds, there's a place for you in our sport. Um, it doesn't matter if you're athletic or not. You know, we talked about that. Wrestling, we know what it looks like as maybe a, as, a, as a spectator, but wrestling is the constant focus of building skills. It's skills and counter skills and kill skills and more counter skills. And just when you think you've learned all the skills, there's more skills to learn. So um, and you don't have to be a super athletic person. Um, I would say I was a, a, probably a very average, you know, high school kid when I started wrestling. You don't have to come in and be super strong because you're going to get stronger. 
Um, you don't have to, you can be a kid who is an amputee. You can be a kid who is deaf or blind or has learning disabilities. Um, our sport is a sport for everyone. And, um, you know, we, we want everyone and we want everybody. There is no girl, despite what her body type is or whether she's in shape or whether she even perceives herself as athletic, um, our sport is a place for you because you're gonna get stronger. You're gonna build skills. Um, you're gonna um, get more agility. Um, and, you know, the areas where you're really strong suddenly those become even stronger in wrestling. We really start to see those come out. In those areas where you're like, I'm not so strong, there's a place for you to get better. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is that, you know, if I'm a parent and I'm like, I don't know that you know, the sport is so aggressive, it's so rough, um, I don't want my daughter, you know, losing or cutting weight. Like Ray said, you don't have to. There's a great trend right now, and I think girls and women's wrestling is really you know, we're, we're helping to kind of push this of, you know, be, be strong, be agile, be really fit at your natural weight and compete there. Um, so, you know, it's more important that we get girls to come into the sport and realize that, yeah, you're short, there's a place for you. You're tall, there's a place, you're really long, there's a place for you. You don't see yourself as an athlete, there's a place for you. Um, so, that's also important, you know, if, if you're an existing girl and you are going to try to get more girls on the team, don't overlook anyone. You know, the quietest girl in the class can often be an absolute force to be reckoned with on a wrestling mat. Um, so, or the girl that doesn't look like she's in shape, that's the girl that all of a sudden, you know, can hold a stance longer than anybody else. So don't overlook any girl no matter what, you know, no matter what you see, our eyes lie to us all the time. Talk to as many girls as you can um, and uh, get them in that wrestling room. And like Ray said, and the other coaches say, um, you know, we get girls to really fall in love with the sport. And I, I will say that one of the things that I got from wrestling is it was the only sport where I could really express myself. I had done so many other sports, but this is the one where I could, as Ray said, really be myself. And, um, and, and so we've got to capture more girls like me that they're really going to find a home, you know, in the sport of wrestling. And now I believe we're going to have an athlete testimonial you know we're going to skip over those and do those at the end and we are going okay. to go right to everybody getting a job haha -ha. here we go yeah. okay my name's les painter and right now i'm in pierce again i get to help run all the uh nswca state tournament so i get to do all the fun things um but recruit um it's already been hit you know, hit on by Ray, but I'm just telling you young ladies, if you get out there and you hit the halls and you get other girls um, to come join you, I mean, here our goal is we have five girls. Our goal is for each one of them to bring somebody um, and, and we'll have 10. Our goal is to have 10 to 12 girls this year, you know, and, and again, we'll do that next year. So make sure you guys are your biggest advocates, you know, recruiting other girls. And again, like they said, don't leave anybody out. I, um, I go and make sure I talk to every, every coach. And I know that if you're not out for ba basketball, if you're not out for, you know, anything, I'm going to hit the streets and I'm going to be talking to you too, because again, I'm your biggest fan a a as a coach. And again, that's why Ray and I, we love working with, you know, everybody too. And promoting, you know, inclusive culture, which we've hit on more than you can ever imagine on this right here. But again, it's family. You become the biggest, greatest family in the world. Like Ray said, I, I got 12 different uh, uh, graduation announcements from girls that I've coached. That's what it's about. It's, it, it isn't about winning and losing. So you guys understand that. Winning and losing is going to happen, okay? Um, it's okay. It, and it's okay to lose. So you guys understand that because you're going to get better along the way. Uh, so don't come in and think, man, I got to be a world beater day one. You won't be. And it's okay because you know why? Girls wrestling has improved that much in the state of Nebraska. In the five years that Ray and I have been involved, it's went from what I would tell you is, hmm, coaches, you could tell we we're just maybe thinking about this. 
to now coaches have gotten involved. So young ladies, don't come in thinking, oh, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm faster than you. I, I, I'll win. No, that doesn't cut it, okay? It's going to take time now. And it's okay when you go out there and you don't accomplish everything you thought you could. Stay with it. It's worth it. I promise you that. And be an ambassador for your sport. You love wrestling. If there's somebody talking negative, you just don't comment. It's okay. Stay out of it. There's only one thing that you need to be towards wrestling, and that's positive. We as wrestling coaches, we as a wrestling family, sometimes we can be our own worst nightmare. We can get out there and say things that can hurt our sport. Don't. Only say positive things about our sport, and we will grow this in the next two to three years. Like, you cannot imagine what's going to happen in the state of Nebraska. And I appreciate all of you being on this call, too. And I'm putting it back to Taylor. Thank you. I couldn't have said that better. Um, I think – here we go. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Ooh. You want to talk a little bit about sanctioned Nebraska T-shirts? Um, Julia? Yeah, I can. So, like I mentioned before, we've been assembling task forces in a number of different states, um, all for the same goal that working on here in Nebraska to get high school women's wrestling as a sanctioned sport within your state. And one of the tools we've been utilizing is the sale of sanctioned, insert state here, t-shirts. Uh, the Nebraska t-shirt sale is currently live. Um, it will be through this Sunday, Taylor? Yep, yep, Sunday. Mm -hmm this Sunday. Um, they're made by Rudis. Really awesome. Rudis is very supportive of women's wrestling, so we appreciate them um, being able to contribute to us in this way, creating this t-shirt series. Uh, they are $30 and are available in women's cut, men's cut, and everything is going to go back to help Nebraska women's wrestling in some capacity. So I encourage all of you to go on and buy a shirt and then also share it on all of your social media, um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever it may be. Um, TikTok's over my head, but I'm sure there are people on here that understand it. Um, so share it. Uh, the more t-shirts we can sell, the more we can get the sanctioned Nebraska message out there um, and also raise some funds to help with the campaign as well. So check that out. And then there's a whole bunch of resources that you guys have, each other and um, coaches and wrestling leaders and us, we're all here for you. Um, sanctioned Nebraska, uh, sanctionedne.com. Um, we'll have the, uh, it'll have the link to this meeting. You can share it. Um, it'll also have these slides with these links in it. Wrestle Like a Girl is another resource. One Courageous Girl, it is linked here on this slide and you'll be able to get that from Sanction Nebraska, maybe even um, some other websites. Uh, Lucha Fit, we talked about. Um, uh, USA Wrestling, How to Start High School, um, High School Sanctioning. Misco Sports is, I think, a local Nebraska sports um, gear company. And then um, the mat.com, another good resource there. So um, these are physical resources outside here. Um, I'm going to come and jump us off of this share screen. Um, so of you guys, so if anybody would mind, like, take off your, put your camera on, um, unless you just can't handle it. But um, raise your hand if you are willing to be a resource for other girls, other coaches, other parents. I know not of all of us have our screens on, but I know that all of you guys with your screens off are also raising your hands. So it's a really good, you have just a really use the little good, hand raise emoji in the chat. I know it's on there. Yeah, do it, do it. We're all here. Yeah, Sophia. Yay, Alan. Okay, yep. Lisa, she'll do what she can. Okay, everybody, like I, it's a really, mm -hmm, Kita, Keta, really cool name, however you pronounce it. It's just a really, um, you know, we, this wrestling community, um, no matter if you're in Nebraska, in Alaska, in New York, in um, Russia, like we're, we're pretty tight, right? And, and reach out to other people because um, you guys, this is, you know, right now you have people we're all in this together. Everybody here that you see, people across the country, people across the world that are growing opportunities for um, you girls. And, and those opportunities are solid. And, um, and I'm just really excited to have you guys be a part of that. And my daughter. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, 
if you guys want to stay on, we have some fun videos to share, um, a little athlete's perspective and, um, uh, and, and uh, parents' perspective and coaches. My daughter is wearing makeup. I'm a little <laughs> not certain about that. That happens when you <laughs> get on a conference call. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to check the Okay. Yep. Find each other. And I'm going to go back to share screen. And if you guys want to check out these fun videos, we'll start them. Here's Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Yossi. Since the age of eight, I had been playing basketball. However, my junior year of high school, an opportunity arose. My school was the first high school in Nebraska to add girls wrestling as an unofficial sport. So I decided to stop shooting hoops and start shooting takedowns. I qualified for the Amateur Athletic Union National Tournament in Des Moines, Iowa. I ended up becoming a national champion in my weight class. Now, I'm a sophomore in college. Because of the strength, determination, and hard work that wrestling taught me, I was asked to compete on the TV show American Ninja Warrior. I became the youngest female to have gone the farthest on the course. Wrestling taught me many important life skills such as failure, discipline, and accountability. Without the opportunity to wrestle, I would not be the same woman that I am today. Ah, uh, see, wrestling. And then I'm gonna share Kim's as well. So um, this is part of a uh, national campaign. Julia can talk a little bit more about it in a minute um, called uh, How She Wrestles. And um, the point is to get our stories out as female wrestlers, as female uh, coaches of female wrestlers, parents of female wrestlers, community members of female wrestlers, and get the female wrestling story spread across the nation in the wrestling community and beyond. Here's Kim's. Hi, my name is Kim Harrell, and today I'd like to share my story of how I wrestle with advocating for females in the sport of wrestling. My wrestling journey began eight years ago when my four-year-old daughter asked if she could wrestle. At the time, she was the only female in a room full of boys. This continued for several years. Over the eight years that my daughter has been on her wrestling journey, I have learned the importance of having a female that can serve as a role model and an advocate for the young women in the sport of wrestling. Females need someone that they can look up to. They need a role model. They need leaders who they can aspire to be like. They need someone who can be a voice for them when they're concerned about speaking up. They need someone who will welcome them into a room full of boys with open arms. Over the summer, I was approached by the high school wrestling coach in our community about being a part of the girls wrestling coaching staff at our high school. I have eagerly embraced that opportunity. I can't hear it anymore. <laughs> Good stuff, huh? Okay. Um, I'm sending it back to you guys. Who wants to talk? I'll, I'll, I'll pop how she wrestles really quickly, if you don't mind. Um, so how she wrestles started about three weeks ago um, with myself and a number of other national team athletes as well as Taya, and it was an idea that I had and within like five minutes of having the idea I realized that we were actually just borrowing something that we were doing from the Nebraska task force in particular uh, with our athlete activation and the videos that we were working on where we were having Nebraska girls share their stories of how they got into wrestling a time they overcame adversity whatever it may be and kind of our messaging was that 
the only way that we can tell people what it's like to be a female wrestler in Nebraska is to hear it from a female wrestler in Nebraska. And I kind of took that same idea and ran with it with how she wrestles. And it stemmed from essentially a lack of media coverage from our major media outlets within our sport. I won't bore you guys with all of those details because it's long. Um, but basically it was like, people aren't buying into women's wrestling at the national level because they don't know our stories. They don't know us as athletes, as humans, as advocates, whoever it may be. Um, so like, we're going to take it upon ourselves to do it and share how she wrestles. So if you want to get involved, which I would encourage all of you to do, um, there are two ways you can go about it. One is making a how she wrestles video with any topic you chose. Um, I did mine with how she wrestles with balance. I believe Taylor did how she wrestles with change. Um, Helen Marulis did one on how she wrestles with the process. Uh, Tamira Mensa did hers on how she wrestles with loss and the passing of her father. So you can go a bunch of different directions. In addition to that, we're also releasing weekly topics now. Um, last week was how she wrestles with confidence. Uh, our current week is how she wrestles with injuries. And then next week is going to be how she wrestles with travel. So each Sunday night, we're releasing a new topic. So if you're too overwhelmed by having the world as your oyster and not knowing what to talk about, you can choose one of these weekly topics or as many of the weekly topics as you want. And it's a, just, like I said, a great way to get our stories out there, whether it's Nebraska centric or more of the national landscape. Um, it's an opportunity for us to showcase ourselves as female wrestlers and show why we're important and why people should kind of buy into us and buy into our sport. So if you want to know more, shoot me a message. Um, but I encourage everyone to get involved if you show choose. And just to follow the project as well on both Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, um, our handles and everything are how she wrestles all lowercase, no spaces. So thanks for letting me pimp that Taylor. Um, oh, I'd like to say that I, I saw the first like week's installment of those. It's absolutely brilliant. And it would be such a great coaching tool. You know, like maybe you're having a, a team meeting at the beginning, you want to talk about confidence and you could throw, you know, you could throw one of those up if, if you have the capability to show it on an iPad or computer or screen in your wrestling room um, and, and use those as a coaching tool. They, they are, it, it, it's high fives to Julia. It's, it's brilliant content and, and it's, and it's women supporting women in wrestling. And um, um, I, I think it's just, it's awesome. Excellent. So if anybody has any questions, um, opening it up to, to that, I know people are hopping off, but we talked a lot. We answered lots of questions, I know. Um, anything in particular? If nobody jumps on, I was going to touch just a little bit on what Les said about records doesn't matter. I had a freshman girl who was 0-12, and, and she finally won her very last match of the year. Uh, as a freshman, and she came back her next year with confidence and work ethic and had something to prove, and she ended up being nine and three, and then she moved away to another town, so I don't have her anymore. But um, this, it doesn't matter what the records are. We want you to improve, and whatever that may be, that's what we want you to improve on. We want you to improve to be a, a great a person for society. We, we want you to be a, a great young woman on whatever it may be. We don't care about the records. I'd also like to jump in on there. Um, last year at Skyler, we had 12 girls on our wrestling team, and uh, five of them had never, ever stepped foot on the mat. And uh, out of those those five actually three of them were medalists at the state tournament and one actually became a state champion and um her only loss of the season was to uh Ray's girl the second match of her career um but it just it's awesome to see these girls improve throughout the season I mean they just take huge strides as they go through and progress and learn things but at the same time they are having a lot of fun you can tell in practice, yeah, there's things that they don't like to do, but they know it's going to make them better. And um, six years ago, uh, I had um, five girls that decided to go out in junior high. They said, we're going to go out. I was like, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're only going to have to wrestle boys. And they're like, we don't care. And then uh, they, the next year, they went out again um, as eighth graders. And they brought in a couple more girls. And then we kept growing uh, two years ago we had 66 kids out in junior high and 21 of them were girls. And uh, this last year we had 15 in junior high as well. And they just keep getting stronger and better and they kept moving on. 
And one of those first five girls actually was our very first state champion here at Skyler, Carla Chacon. And uh, she's actually going on and wrestling uh, at Algoma University up in St. Saul Marie, Ontario uh, this coming year. So it's, I'm excited to see how she can compete uh, at the next level as well. It's, I'm hoping that we can ten- continue to keep growing uh, at Skyler as well and uh, keep trying to compete at a higher level. I keep talking with my girls all the time, recruit, 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 try to get more girls to come out because it's just a great experience and they all just get together and get along so well. Um, Speaking of recruiting, as we talk about getting the girls to recruit, you know, as you, depending on the makeup of your high school program, um, if you are kind of more of the one family, boys and girls, same time in the room, everyone practices with everyone. um, And even if it's, they're all in there at the same time, but they're, they're, they're separate. I think it's really important to try to get the boys to get involved in recruiting girls. So, you know, for the boys, to, for them to realize that girls are their allies in sport uh, it is really critical. And for, for them to be encouraged to, I want you to bring one new boy and one new girl next season. Um, you, could, you could make it interesting, maybe have a competition for the boy or girl that recruits the most for the other, you know, for the other side, so to speak. If I'm the girl who recruits the most boys, I, I get something special. And if I'm a girl who, or and I'm a boy who recruits the most girls, I get something special. So I think it's really important to try to get your boys involved in making a contribution to the girls team. And that's a, that's a great way for them to be able to do it. Excellent. Hey, um, Jeff Albers is coach at York College. Do you want to say anything to your uh, your your uh, potential wrestlers of the future? Yeah, hey, how's everybody doing? Um, yeah, you know we we started off our program with uh, seven girls, and then. Um, Last year we were at 14, and this year we're going to be at 23. So we're just uh, making strides. We're trying to, uh, you know, get get a lot of girls in Nebraska interested. Um, I try to go to the term as I can here. I went to West Point over there with Ray, went to that tournament. Um, just trying to get out there and, and you know, meet, meet new girls and try to get it going. Um, I have a daughter that's is going to be in seventh grade, and she's going to wrestle this year. Um, just anything that I can do for this sport um, is what I'm going to try to do. Um, you know, we're just trying to grow it. Thanks so much, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Anybody else want to share anything before we hop off? This is your guys' network. Okay, I think we've done it. Thank you all very much. Julia, do you want to say anything before we head out? No, thank you guys so much. Um, Mark, I don't know you, but I do have to call you out on something real quickly. Um, I'm a native Michigander, and you're talking about a girl that's going to wrestle at Sault Ste. Marie. In a weird backwards Michigan way, we pronounce that as Sault Ste. Marie. Why? I don't know. But <laughs> we also pronounce Mackinac as Mackinac because we're weird. Um, but you said that, and I was like, man, <laughs> we're weird in Michigan, and I hate us. But <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, I'm yeah, from you guys come too. Are you weird? <laughs> are you from here? Uh, Reed City. Yeah, so <laughs> I you're spent 26 the years there before I moved to Nebraska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to stick together. Yeah, I'm from- my, my brother was a wrestler up there for the high school, and um, he's where I started learning wrestling, actually, because he used to use me as a guinea pig. <laughs> and then my son out here. Awesome. I love that. Michiganders got to stick together. And our weird pronunciations <laughs> and the way we do things for absolutely no reason, because it makes no sense. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, but I just want to thank you guys all for coming on today. Um, I, I, I always tell the Nebraska task force members this, and I think they think I'm joking, but this is really my favorite task force that I'm working with. Um, they're just very proactive, very intentional in trying to grow the sport. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And if you guys have any questions, reach out to any of them, reach out to myself, my email is in the chat down there. Um, and I look forward to you guys being a sanctioned state here very soon. See you guys. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Great job. Thanks guys. What a week. Yeah.